Does the world really need another video about Akai's Juno emulation plugin? Does the world really need another Juno emulation plugin? I have no idea, but I wanted to try it out, so here we are. To be very clear, uh, Akai has no connection with this video. I bought this with my own money and just wanted to give it a go. And I will admit the title is a bit tongue in cheek because there is a free trial, so you can try it if you want. All that being said, let's get into it. So this is Jura, the definitely not a Juno emulation uh, plugin by Akai. This is a paid expansion plugin, basically for their line of standalone NPCs, the force, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I got it on an introductory sale and I've dug into it just a tiny bit, but I wanted to mostly try it out on camera. Uh, it is pretty funny, by the way, how the sales copy for it just dances around the fact that it's a Juno emulation because they don't want to get in trouble with Roland uh, when the parents are fighting. It's uh, it gets weird. So this is the main bit of the interface. You've got your kind of main performance controls and your main envelope controls that you can cycle through envelope one and envelope two. Your chorus, the all important. I kind of think combining them is a bit much personally, and then helpfully a mix knob. And I hate how this covers it up, but it'd be like that. So right now I'm just tweaking the default preset. And I do want to mention right off the bat, as someone who owns a Roland JU-06A that I really like the sound of and really like the form factor of, but rarely use. That's part of the selling and anti-selling point of this thing for me, because on one hand, this is not as hands-on. It will never be as hands-on. Even with the Q-Links and such, it just won't be as hands-on and it won't have that kind of, ooh, a mini Juno, isn't that adorable, factor. But on the other hand, having it self-contained on a device that I'm already going to be making full songs with is super nice. That's what ultimately convinced me to pull the trigger, plus the FOMO of the early sale ending, but don't worry about it. So I've already recorded in a little melody off camera from a previous song of mine. And what I basically want to do is just start cycling through settings and presets, build up a little tune if I can, and kind of just explore what this thing can sound like in a fairly laid back way. <laughs> so turn up some release on that. That uh, warble is aggressive. So a few things to note right off the bat, you've got this analog knob, which just controls the amount of, I believe, analog modeling. And so the higher this gets, the more you're going to have like phase cancellation and warble and um, that kind of unpredictable nature of things. I believe this is a global control. Yes. You do also have decently in-depth LFO controls. So you can hear how ramp is a bit of the way up. So that vibrato takes a second to kick in. It slowly is brought in and then I can turn off that LFO entirely. I can also control this with the Q links, of course. We're going to bring noise back for some bass stuff in a bit, I think. You've also got sync for the LFO, which will just sync it to your project's tempo, and then resync, which will basically just re-trigger the LFO anytime you hit a new note. I'm going to keep that off for now. Dedicated low cuts. And so you'll notice you have your more in-depth separate controls for your filters versus your uh, amp envelopes. Whereas on the main screen, um, stuff is a little more, as far as I can tell, simplified. So you kind of choose how in depth you want to go with this. So you can hear how the filter and the amp envelope are linked together. 
but then we can decouple them if we want. So you can kind of choose how faithful to the original you want to be or how in depth with kind of more modern controls you want to go, which is kind of neat. I know I sound like I'm advertising this. I just am trying to relay hopefully useful information because like I said, I have no interest in selling you this and I don't even have a ton of experience with this yet. And then you can choose uh, your pitch bend range here. This does not do a pitch bend. Uh, this, I believe, actually ties your pitch bend also to your filter, which could get you some interesting results. It's interesting to have an arpeggiator in here, because I think normally I just go for the normal like MPC arpeggiator. This isn't awkward. <laughs> so where's my global cutoff? Here we go. I will say it does sound nice. It's like a little dry, but definitely vintage. Like dry in the way that a vintage synth is dry, but it's got that shimmer to it. It captures both pretty well, I think. Although to be fair, what do I know? I'm 25. I did not grow up with the Juno being the primary sound of popular music. That's nice. What if we did this? I want to reset this to kind of ring out a bit. And then to bring down that warble again. Keep it restrained, I think. That'll do for now for this sound. Let's just start a new instance of Jura. What I want to do is get a little bass going. I appreciate that. That's not what I'm looking for, though. That's pretty close. So I'm going to turn down the envelope amount. Something sounding like a little more brittle than I want. Is that a technical term? I have no idea. So I think we just need to tinker with the uh, envelopes a bit more. That's working a lot better for me. And then also in this case, I think I just want to do note repeat for a little like rolling baseline. Let's latch that. Hop back into program edit and figure out our baseline. Let's get another track. How's our CPU usage doing? Not bad. I'm imagining this is supposed to be a fairly lightweight uh, plug-in to run. I like that. Oh, that's the sound. Like literally, that's the sound I was looking for. So check this out. So, so far I'm having a good time. I cannot yet say whether it is worth the whole 150 buckaroonies, but to me it was worth the 80. As superfluous as I might think this is as a product that exists, as much as I'm like, did this need to be made? Probably not. Uh, I'm having a good time. <laughs> I will admit I like the convenience of having a nice sounding emulation on this thing, or I think this would be really at home with the force, but for whatever reason, my brain just was screaming at me that I need to try it on the, on the NPC. Okay, base res should be good. Please do what I think it's gonna do. I need a near. That's closer. 
We haven't dug into the effects yet. That's kind of nice. Okay, I bet you we can shape this to be what I want it to sound like. Get like a subtle amount of noise going. Okay, I'm never going to toggle this on. I don't care how authentic it sounds. I just do not want that in my life. No chorus noise for me. Thank you very much. How hard can we push this? So we want this to go... Near... We're getting there. So we can increase the amount of that envelope, I think. That's already a legato by default. Nice. Where's my delay? We get the stomach gurgle bass. So we just have to make sure that re-triggers when, when I really want it to. Do you hear that little clicking sound? I've heard the legends of this. We might have just encountered it, so we're going to keep an ear out for that, because that could be a problem. So then I'm just going to have this note, but right up against the previous one. That ought to work. Good. Good boy. And yes, that element's too much. Let's turn that down a bit. How's our friend the CPU doing? It's doing fine. Like I said, lightweight plugin. We can work with that. See, this is our old friend Tube Synth. I don't want to play with you anymore, Tube Synth. What else we got? We haven't done any pads yet. This is like the Space Wave pad. We're just going to let this be a subtle layer, but I will adjust it a little bit. More reverb. More analog. This just needs some serious dampening. We want some chords. Who wants some chords? Factory Bank. It's so funny to me, the like looking back, knowing where synths went, seeing like this was supposed to be a brass sound. This was supposed to be a trumpet. And it's like now we just know these as their own like iconic sounds in their own right. Like they I wonder if they knew. Like, that's not a piano. That's a pluck. See, I'm a big fan of the factory banks being in here. Let's get some actual chords up in here. This is maybe not the right patch for this, but let's just get, like, something in there. And I think what I want to do right now is solo this. And let's go through some pads. So do you hear the octave thing? Yeah, the reverb has an octave thing. That's nice. Yo, why don't we just duplicate this whole thing? So then, I'm gonna solo this. We're going more pads, let's go bright this time. Yeah. Okay, that's ridiculous. Uh, but it is fun. Okay, this is a tangent. I feel like there's a bit of a missed opportunity on a on a standalone NPC to have a set of four faders as their own cue links. I don't even know if that would be all that practical, but I would enjoy it. So you're probably starting to notice some sameness in the sound. That's not entirely surprising. 
ultimately you'd probably end up creating like some kind of go-to presets and then just like modifying them and writing as much as possible. That's wide. Okay, so quick tangent. One thing I wanted to add was a little pitch bend. There. So I need to figure out how to do such a thing. Okay, so I'll go to Legato. Let's turn up the glide time. Hey. Wee woo, wee woo. So we only want this to trigger during an overlapping note. And uh, I want that to be legato. This should work. Excellent. That's maybe a little fast. <laughs> what are words, man? All right, you ready for me to spend like an interminable amount of time dialing this in? Okay, so what I just did uh, took a bit of extra effort and we're going to cut most of it. But um, basically, I set my lead patches to legato and set my glide to legato. So if you play the notes disconnected from each other, you won't get any glide. And it'll re-trigger every time. But if you hold stuff down... It won't re-trigger, and it will engage the glide. So now we get this lovely little note bump that you'll hear, if you're patient. That's working for me. So let's add one more important thing, and that is an ARP. And I'm going to be a good boy. I'm going to try to stick to the actual ARP in this thing. So ARP poly. I need to bring the chords back for this. That's kind of nice. If you slow that down, this becomes like a uh, retro space documentary. And I'm here for it. Let's go through a few more. <laughs> That's interesting. It's kind of tight. Doesn't really fit with this mix, but I can dig it. Whoa. Space Mountain type beat. I actually mess with that heavily. That's not bad. So while this was a fairly like quick and surface level exploration of the Jura plugin, hopefully it was useful and hopefully it showed you kind of a synthwave producer's perspective of using it to build up a song idea. This video definitely leaned pretty positive. I didn't really know how positive or negative I was going to be about this going in, but I ended up quite liking it. It does sound really nice. Is it worth 150 bucks? I'm not sure. I think that's going to depend on the individual person. I'm glad I didn't have to pay that full amount because I got it while it was on its introductory sale. I'm sure it'll go on sale again at some point. Uh, however, I do want to put in your brain a pretty important uh, caveat. And I've talked about this in the past, but basically uh, when you're spending extra money on stuff in the Akai ecosystem, it can feel a little bit like you're building on a foundation of sand. Like they've made good paid extra DLC essentially, but they've still got a lot of jank kind of hiding under the surface. Like in my case, when I went to install this plugin, first of all, it just acknowledged that I had activated it and then insisted that I needed to go activate it with no further explanation. And I even tried inputting my full long ass serial number and it still didn't like it. And in this case, that was solved by a simple reboot. But now my splice integration is still 
not updating properly. So I want you to keep this in mind. I think Akai has made quite a nice little Juno emulation plugin, and I quite like it. But be prepared to put up with some jank. Be prepared to put up with some kind of broken elements that really shouldn't be broken and really should have been fixed a long time ago. They seem like they get around to fixing bugs eventually for the most part, but I feel like this is a really necessary caveat to anything in the Akai ecosystem to put in your brain. Anyway, if you'd like to see me make Synthwave on the MPC without any of the paid plugins, you can check out this video up over here. And if you'd like to see a completely different Juno emulation or recreation, you can check out this video up over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.